Good morning, Sister Karina. Oh, bless you, Pam. Lord, we praise you. Good morning, my dear friends, and welcome to our morning prayer on this rather wet, damp, Cumbrian morning. Hallelujah. I love it when it rains. That's the joy of being a December baby. But it's always a blessing to welcome our dear sister Pam, from sunny South Wales, Burrada Sadahi, and good morning to Sister Barbara and to Sister Karina and Sister Magdalena. Lovely to have God's musketeers with us to praise God this morning. Ah, and our dear Sister Jan has joined us. Welcome, dear Jan. This morning, I've dedicated my light and my prayers today for two things. The first is for modern day slavery. And I can only speak for England where it was discovered with the outbreak or the spike of COVID in Leicester that Leicester is famous for making clothes and uh, they've discovered there are quite a few sweatshops or factories where workers are working for below the minimum wage and who are exploited, in effect, modern day slaves. I want to pray for them and I want to pray for a cessation or an end of modern day slavery and owners taking advantage of human beings who are in poverty. But we had a phone call before going live this morning and our dear friend, Sister Julie, who has been a member of the community for a number of years. She's quite distraught because her pet cat, Cassie, um, the vet came to her home to put Cassie to sleep. So we remember dear Sister Julie and also we remember you in our prayer. So let us begin by playing those beautiful bells, the bells of St. Mary's Abbey in Waterford in Ireland. Thank you. 
And now we have our opening prayer and our readings of prayer and the hymn with the videos have been chosen for us by the Holy Spirit. So our first prayer comes from the Little Book of Celtic Prayers and Reflections by Jenny Child. And this prayer comes under the heading, In Quiet Confidence. When the stresses of life overwhelm, in quietness and confidence shall be my strength. When my heart is weighed down with grief, in quietness and confidence shall be my strength. When my body feels weak and ill, in quietness and confidence shall be my strength. When friends desert and betray, in quiet confidence shall be my strength. When hopes are shattered and plans fail, in quietness and confidence shall be my strength. For you are my rock and my refuge. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And our hymn chosen for us this morning, and it's from Hymns for Living. And it is hymn number 163, Those Who Seek Wisdom by Alexis Fyodorovich born in 1799. Those who seek wisdom, seek truth and courage, walk through the darkness, endure through the storm. Those who meet wisdom in youth or in old age, know that the wonder is always newborn. They know the vision in words is spoken they live the vision without words indeed, touching with loving, in healing the broken, touching with dreaming, with vision they lead. Rise out of weeping, joy in this hour, sing out our greeting in this new born day. Now may our meeting rekindle the power of truth and courage to walk in God's way. How lovely. How beautiful is that? Those who seek wisdom. Our first reflection for today from the late Father Henry J. M. Nouven. And his book is You Are the Beloved. And his theme this morning, the eternal in the present. All the events of life, even such dark events as war, famine and flood, violence and murder, are not irreversible fatalities. Each moment is like a seed that carries within itself the possibility of becoming the moment of change. We no longer need to run from present time in search of the place where we think life is really happening. We begin to have a truer vision of the world and of our lives in relation to time and eternity. We begin to glimpse something of eternity in time. At this point, Boredom falls away and the joyful and painful memories of our lives take on new and profound meaning. It is then that we know that for us, time is becoming transparent. The contemplative life, therefore, is not a life that offers a few good moments between the many bad ones but a life that transforms all our time into a window through which the invisible world becomes visible. 
I love that last paragraph. The contemplative life, therefore, is not a life that offers a few good moments between the many bad ones, but a life that transforms all our time into a window through which the invisible world becomes visible. How true. Thank you. And our little book titled In God's Presence, we read this morning a reflection titled Reverence to Our Heavenly Father, Mother God. And it's underpinned by Psalm 29, verse 2. How often do you worship God just for who God is? Many times we go to God for what we need or desire. We go to God when we are in a bind. We go to God when things are at its worst and we don't know where to turn. We go to God when things aren't looking good on our behalf. We go to God when we feel lost. And we go to God when we feel alone and unworthy. We go to God when we think no one else will understand us. How often do you go to God just to praise his holy name? God commands us to worship his name. There is a sweet peace when you praise the name of the Lord. Don't get so caught up in yourself that you forget to worship and praise God. Try not asking God for anything today. Make today all about God. Bask in the presence of God, expressing to him how much he means to you, expressing how much you love and adore him. God deserves all your praise and worship. Make it your daily priority to give God the glory and honor that is due to a loving Father, Mother God. That's lovely. Thank you. And from the little book of Rumi, we read, Open your door, beloved. You are the wine. I am the cup. You are eternal. I am a prisoner of time. Silence, fool. Who would open his door to a madman? There we go. But finally, you know what's coming? A quote from His Holiness the Dalai Lama, from his little book, The Book of Wisdom. On humility, he says this, if one assumes a humble attitude, one's own good qualities will increase. And under the heading, Respect for Others, by developing a sense of respect for others and a concern for their welfare, we reduce our own selfishness, which is the source of all problems, and enhance our sense of kindness, which is a natural source of goodness. Amen. There's lots to reflect on today, isn't there? Well, let us just come and play this beautiful video that I came across early this morning. And it's called The Servant's Song by Cyprian Consiglio and Father James Mackill, who are hermits in the Camdelese community, a form a branch of Benedictine spirituality. 
and I'm playing it instead of the Benedictus. Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant. We are pilgrims on a journey. We are travelers on the road. We are here to help each other. I will hold a Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand up to you, speak the peace you want. beautiful. Thank you. And now we come to our intercessory prayers. Let us bless our Savior, who by his rising to new life has freed the world from fear. Lord Jesus, we offer you our prayer this morning. Take to yourself our cares, our hopes, and our needs. Christ, our loving Lord, in your kindness, be with the sick and the poor, the weak and the dying. Bring them your comfort. Lord Jesus, we pray that through our troubles, we may learn to feel the sufferings of others. Help us to show them your love and compassion. In the silence of our hearts, we commend our day to God. And now, my dear friends, we take the words that we have heard as pilgrims on an amazing journey, a journey to light, to love, to blessedness, 
a journey that allows us experience the tenderness, the warmth in a gentle caress from a loving God. Our world desperately needs to sense and feel this amazing love. So we who were called by God as God's prayer partners for unity and peace, for healing of our beautiful planet Earth, the animal kingdom, and for every child of God, we come now to that special place in our heart that connects us to the spiritual room of God, our soul. Let us relax and in the stillness just be aware that Jesus is right next to us. He never ever leaves us. It is we who leave him. When we allow the dramas of the world, when we allow fear, anxiety and tension and stress, our human failings, those negative voices that tell us we're useless. Why would God bother with someone like me? A sinner who has fallen down so many times. Why would God bother with you and me? But he does. Because he loves us. And it is right that we sing his praise. It is right that we come together as a beating heart of God on earth. And we say, Lord, here I am. Here we are to sing your praise, to thank you for your blessings. So just relax and embrace the peace where you are, the silence in your sacred space, and use your gift of free will to call on your God, whoever your God is, be it the Christ, Lord Buddha, Vishnu Ganesh Krishna, Paramahanda Yogananda, Mia Baba, or one of the great ascended masters, maybe our father Abraham, Moses, the prophet Muhammad, whoever your God is, call on them now and invite them into your space to come, to sit with you, and have a meaningful conversation, a one-to-one, -one, eyeball to eyeball, without the fear. Now sense the stillness, and now receive the gentle touch of our first love, the Christ, the Son of God. And he's right with you now. You do not have to see him to believe. Blessed are they who do not see me and yet believe there's the kingdom of God. But just visualize this amazing young man 
in his early thirties who surrendered his life to God as you and I have. Some of you as single celibate hermits, some of you happily married in a loving, meaningful relationship with children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Jesus asks us to surrender our heart to the mystical heart of God. And the moment we surrender our heart to him, you could say that there is an explosion of spiritual fireworks where the angels begin to sing and praise God for you. Because the child that may have been lost to fear has come home to love. And just visualize that where you are, Jesus is right next to you, calling you by your name. Come into my arms. Let me hold you. Allow me to love you. Allow me to touch you. And in those arms, there is great healing and an inner awareness of a spiritual homecoming, a sense of completeness, an inner joy that you cannot express in words. But to experience it allows you to levitate like centuries of Avila. You levitate with so much love within you from a God who loves you. Oh Jesus, hold each one of us tightly in your arms because we live in uncertain times, challenging times. Where we look into the world and we see, yes, there is beauty, but beauty that has been desecrated by man's greed. Our beautiful forests are being laid bare through greed our rainforests pillaged, the lungs of the universe. And many of your children who've chosen another God, who worship their ego, and who are led by materialism and sensual pleasures, and all kinds of temptation now on the internet and where there is such cruelty from one child of God to another where mighty countries have no respect for the human individual and think nothing of taking their life. Lord, hold us tight and empower us not to stray, but to fall in love again with you, our first love.
And in the arms of Christ, you hear his heartbeat. A heartbeat of love for you. You sense his healing touch flow through every part of you, bringing you back into balance and harmony so that you can behold and fold and hold the beloved without fear. And if there is something pressing on your heart, why not name it now? Bless it and release it to him. But leave it there and then begin the prayer of gratitude and praise. And keep praising God and thanking God who has already answered your prayer. And I pray for unity and peace within all faiths. I pray for unity and peace in the cathedral of God, this beautiful world. And I pray that the children of God will wake up and reclaim their divinity as a child of God. and learn to love one another. We pray for all our politicians and heads of governments and states, for all our religious leaders, but we remember especially Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, our reigning monarch and head of the Anglican Church worldwide and here at home. We remember His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Thich Nhat And we remember our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all the men and women of all faiths who've surrendered their heart to God as pilgrims, pilgrims of hope, pilgrims of peace, pilgrims who are willing to share a smile with their enemy. And I pray for the many who've asked for prayer. Let us relax now as we come to, to pray the Lord's Prayer.
almighty and ever-living God, strengthen our faith, our hope, and our love. May we do with loving hearts what you ask of us and come to share the life you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and bring you peace. Amen. Amen. Let us thank the Lord. beautiful. And now our closing prayer is a song by Angelina, who's going to sing for us the prayer of St. Francis, make me a channel of your peace, my gift to you from the Lord, because I want to thank you for joining me in prayer and letting me pray with you. Amen.
And now I come to blow out this flame. And together we give thanks to a loving God, to a forgiving God, to a compassionate God, and a God of many names and none. I thank the Lord for your gift of self and prayer. And may your God bless you and empower you today to reclaim who and what you are, a beloved child of God. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve the God who loves you, the God who called you here as his foot soldiers for prayer in this beautiful world, being eroded and destroyed by evil and men's greed, but God's love will triumph through each one of us. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, paxet bonum, om shanti, solo di caritas, salam alaikum, and may the peace and the love and the joy of all that there is bless you now. Have a wonderful day, dear friends, till we meet again. Amen. And thank you all for joining me on YouTube and on Facebook. And I wish Facebook would close down, but it won't. But that's okay. We'll keep persevering.